The following video has been created and produced by Morgan Video Productions for your entertainment. I'm older than the trees and I can't even remember my last stuff. <laughs> Takes 45 gallons to make a gallon. I was 16 years old when I started. I used to boil in an iron kettle, and there's three of us kids playing hide and seek. And we forget about the syrup and it'd burn up, it'd be just ashes. That's when I was 16. When I never made it again till, we, till after I milked cows up here. And we started tapping a few trees, and that's where we tapped the trees right over here. These are the spiles we had. We make these out of shumac wood. Run the hot wire through it and clean it all out. It had to be on an angle for it to rip, run. Now we use all plastic. Hello? What's up? Um, what about feeding your toys? Grandma wants to know if you guys are hungry. kid most of his life up in Atlanta you know and then he was in the Navy and had jobs in Saginaw and he didn't do it then but when he moved back here was farming and uh, I know when I was very small he started messing around with it in the woods he actually used to I think when I was even smaller tap the few trees and would boil it in a big iron pot over an open fire I can remember that as a little real little kid as a teenager, I guess he learned to do this in his biology classes. He loved biology, and therefore he knows all the names of all the trees in the woods, which is a body of knowledge I do not have, and he made maple syrup. Well, then he, we had an old iron kettle, so he showed the kids how to make maple syrup. It's, it's better if you, if you use the old sugar maple, that's the old black bark on the tree. That's a hard maple, that's the best for making syrup because the sap content is a lot higher than it is in the soft maple. This is the container that, that puts the maple syrup in it. Oh, that means then we sell it. That's right. This is how you eat maple syrup. Mmm. How about you, Clarie? Do you like it? Mm. You can put it on ice cream, too. Yeah, that's a delicious treat. Well, I think the Sap Shack, in its heyday, was a real big social scene that time of the year. It's easier to just do it that way, isn't it? Is that pretty good, Clarie? Winter gets over with, you got cabin fever, and you come out, it's a great social, fun, playing cards. It was a great social scene, people being able to be friendly and visit with each other. A lot of neighbors come and help, and some get in the way, but they're all there to visit and eat, and it's just, it's a, a friendship thing. The biggest thing is my dad enjoys having all the neighbors come down, and have all the people come, and family members come, and just gets people together a little bit. Teachers would bring elementary students down there. They come with a bus, here comes the big bus pulling up into my mom and dad's driveway, you know, <laughs> with all these kids and then they'd have to get their energy out so then they'd kind of do a walk and have to walk around the pond and kind of get their wiggles out, you know. My dad is love. His heart is, is full for everyone. It's just, 
He's a giver, and my mom and dad are kind of an unlikely couple. Yet, as very different as they are, they've sure forged a life together. They've been married for 64 years. They've shown us what a long-term commitment is all about, which was huge. Where's Craig? Craig! Hey, Craig! Well, once we decided to tap the whole woods, it grew from there. First, we tapped our whole woods. And then the next year, we tapped Brown's Woods, which is across the fence line. And then by the, uh, probably by the late 80s, we even started tapping another woods of, of Jimmy Brown's down Briggs Road, uh, you know, a half mile. So at one point, we probably had 12 to 1,300 taps. It was a hobby that went out of hand. Oh, there's a crazy little shack beyond the tracks And everybody calls it the sugar shack Well, it's just a Actually, we sold to H&H uh, &H Bakery, we sold to Forwards and Standish and in West Branch. In other words, we had a lot of syrup. Sugar shack I think the most we ever made, it was in the 90, early 90s sometime, we made 283 gallons in one year. We had, to, we had to run it 24 hours a day. We were taking two batches off a day. My dad would take a batch off during the day and I would stay up every night and take a batch off in the middle of the night. They would make donations to things in the community like the prize, like at an auction or something, would be a free breakfast in the sap shack and a quart of maple syrup, you know, and that would be prized. And so they'd have people coming down that they'd never met before who won and were cashing in their voucher for I didn't their... know that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dad got a little overzealous of wanting that sap to start running. He knew it was warming up, but the lines were frozen with sap in them. So he's like, get the heating pad out. Let's thaw it out so we can get that sap moving through the lines. I got a heating pad. Yeah, it's long enough to reach these areas. It's helping. It didn't really work, but I mean, that was him being a little overzealous to get the process going. Nothing, Roy. Got the 18 here today. It's usually the last part of February or the first part of March. It starts melting, thawing, and the uh, sun the sun's got to be shining for it to run good. If the sun don't shine anyway, they'll freeze up again, you know. Ideally, you want to be on the south east side of the tree because the sunlight hits it in the morning. So it thaws out quicker. But our trees we've tapped so many years, we have to move them around. Okay, good, you're gonna show us how to make maple syrup. Drill to this tree, three inches, for the sap to flow out into the bag. Over here, we have the sap flowing out into the vacuum lines. Vacuum lines take the sap into the storage tank and it blows gravity flow out of the storage tank into the evaporator. The sap is 98% water, only 2% sugar. 
and it works its way back and forth into these compartments. We finish it in here until it's syrup. The best one was when Patrick, he went and made pancakes for him. But uh, Ruth took him to, I think it's Wheeler's. And uh, they ordered pancakes, and the, and the woman says, What's the matter? Don't you like our pancakes? They don't taste right. <laughs> <laughs> I never did work in the sugar shack. I paid the bills, I ordered the equipment, and put the dates on the label. I'm sort of like the secretary type person. When my son Craig was in high school and getting ready for college, we had expanded the business. We did fields all around here and, and made only 300 gallons to sell. And we thought, well, if we make a profit, then we can put that in his college fund. So we put his name on it, Maple Ridge Maple Syrup, with Craig Harrison's name on it. But now he's 50 years old, and they still have his name on him because I ordered so many labels. <laughs> <laughs> and now we only do what's on our own land. This is the last roll. <laughs> oh, wow. My dad was getting a little older and didn't want to have to have him walk down a hill all the time. Yeah, that was part of it. And we're downsizing because I, I live an hour away and I'm getting older and I can't stay up every night anymore either. <laughs> Got kids and have things going on. So, you know, that was when I was first out of college when we were really going at it big. Because, you, you know, it's not hard work, but it, somebody's got to be there. It takes a lot of time. They, they downsized Grandpa and quit doing all the other woods around that belonged to Browns and everything. And then what he did is like, then he pulled in several friends of his that had trees and had them bring sap over because they thought, he thought they cut him down too much. Hang, hanging over the door is the last time we bought a license. We had a, hanging up over the door. The guy said, I got good news for you today. I said, what do you got? He said, you don't have to buy a license no more. Because you don't, unless you make so much money. I don't know even know what it was now. You just can't make enough to sell anymore. It's a family tradition. It's, it's gotten to be that. Except that Grandpa's getting old now and he can't keep up. He just can't keep it going. Guess how many pancakes you flipped in that sap shack over the years? No. <laughs> <laughs>